Hello everyone, my name is Viviana and I am the dietetic intern at Sacramento State and I am doing my outpatient rotation at One Community Health and I wanted to make a cooking demo on how to make a super easy recipe with only a couple ingredients that can be incorporated into your daily life. You can include your children in it and it's fun and delicious. So let's get started. So I want to talk a little bit about the importance of knife skills. Having good knife skills will keep you safe in the kitchen, prevent any injuries. So what you want to do is you want to purchase a knife that fits your hand like so. As you can see, my thumb is comfortable on the edge of the knife and my index finger fits right under the divot here. And you want to make sure you firmly grab it at the edge and when you're cutting you want to make sure that the tip of the knife stays on your cutting board so you're going to do a rocking motion like so while keeping it on the cutting board i wanted to show how you would do it to the cherry tomatoes that you are cutting for your pizzas so as you can see here these cherry tomatoes are unstable and roll around on your cutting board. What I like to do is find the side of the cherry tomato that's the flattest and put it face down on my cutting board. And then using the bear claw method, so I'll, this is the bear claw method, having your fingers pointed down, I'm gonna grab the Roma tomato. I'm gonna grab my knife where I can comfortably grasp it and I am going to make a slice down the middle and notice how the tip of my knife does not come off the cutting board when I'm making the cut. And you wanna do this again when your pieces are half like this, you wanna cut it in half again and you wanna cut it in half again. Hello everyone, so I wanted to come on here and also talk about ways you can measure your food if you don't have specific measuring tools. So I want to start off with one tablespoon. As you can see here, I have a regular spoon that I just got it out of my drawer. And this would be equal to one tablespoon. And as you can see here, this is a regular tablespoon that I also have and it's very similar to each other and it would be equal the same if you were to use this as one tablespoon versus this. Next I wanted to show you what one teaspoon would look like. So this is one teaspoon and this is just a smaller spoon that I found in my drawer and then this would be the one teaspoon measurement in the actual measuring utensil. So as you can see, they are similar. And lastly, I wanted to show you one cup. So for one cup, you can use a standard coffee mug. I found this one in my drawer and this is exactly one cup. And as you can see, this is a regular measuring utensil that you would use to measure liquids. It's very different than the measurement utensil that you would use to measure dry goods. For liquid, you want to use something similar to this or if you have a standard coffee mug. So for today's demo, you are going to need a toaster, a baking dish, and an oven. Other things that would be helpful as well is a cutting board and a knife. Here are our ingredients. We have 100% whole wheat English muffin. This is a Winkle brand, but you can definitely use any brand. Mexican style blend cheese and Hunt's garlic and herb pasta sauce. And then these are optional. I had cherry tomatoes and spinach. 
but you can definitely incorporate any other vegetables that you have in your kitchen. Uh, zucchini would be good, and or you can also top it off with meat if you want to incorporate more protein. So as you can see, the ingredients that I listed in the beginning are 100% whole wheat. There is cheese that is uh, fat free or low in fat that you can look for that's also a great option if you're trying to cut down on your fat intake and we also have that you can find in the store is low sodium sauce or no added sugar in sauce um, i will be inserting pictures here so you can see what i'm talking about um, and these are easy swaps that you can do when you are grocery shopping and when you're keeping in mind any recommendations that your doctor or registered dietitian has given to you so first what you're going to do is you're going to set your oven to 425 degrees um, and then you're going to bake the mini pizzas for 15 minutes then you're going to go ahead and proceed to wash your hands. It's very important to make sure you're keeping up with good hygiene, especially during the COVID pandemic. Um, so washing your hands for at least 20 seconds with warm water and soap. Next, you want to wash your canned item. Here you see me washing my can with soap, but you can definitely just use a wet towel or napkin to do so. Um, Here I am toasting my bread. This will give the bread an added crunch that will help prevent any sogginess after you put the sauce on top. Then I will be adding the English muffins to the baking sheet. Whole wheat bread provides many great nutrients like fiber. You want to make sure you are consuming 20 to 25 grams of fiber per day. So you want to incorporate at least five grams of fiber per meal. One of these English muffins provides you with three grams of fiber, which is a really good amount for an English muffin. Now you'll see I am adding my tomato sauce. Canned tomato sauce is a great staple to have in your pantry. It is long lasting and versatile. Tomato sauce adds many nutritional benefits to your diet like vitamin A, which is good for eye health, and potassium for heart health. It also provides you with six additional grams of fiber. Next, I am adding my cheese. Here, I am eyeballing how much cheese I want. Cheese is a great way to incorporate calcium into your diet. You can add any kind of cheese you would like, but if you are looking into decreasing your fat intake, adding low fat cheese is a great option. Now you'll see me adding spinach on top. Spinach is rich in vitamin A and C and iron. It also benefits your eye health and helps with heart health. Spinach does wilt when you cook it, so you want to be very generous with it. Lastly, I'm adding the cherry tomato. Cherry tomatoes are packed with vitamin C and will be the perfect topping with your pizzas. This is where you can also add vegetables you may have in your kitchen. Purple onions would go great, olives, even broccoli. And you can include any meat that you would like as well, like ground turkey or turkey breast and chicken. And lastly, you want to put them in the oven for at least 15 minutes or at, and when you see the cheese melted. And here is a finished product. I hope you enjoyed this cooking demo and I hope it was easy to follow. If you do need the recipes, I will have them linked uh, to give them as a handout provided today. Thank you.